Mariners win three to two. They improved to 17 and 13 on the season, and they've taken two of the first three games against Atlanta. Go over the scoring plays. Third inning, Placido Polanco is not his name. Jorge Polanco, homers to right to score Josh Rojas to make it two to nothing in the third inning. Mariners get another in the fourth, and it ends up being a big one. Dylan Moore doubles home Mitch Hanniger, three nothing at the end of four. No scoring until the eighth, and then Atlanta makes it interesting. Ozzy Albies singles home Travis D'Arnaud to make it 3-1, and then Austin Riley reaches on, they called it an infield single, which is nonsense, but it ends up scoring a run because there's a throwing error. Uh, I believe Jared Kelnick scored that run. 2-3, to three, but Munoz does the job for the rest of the game. He looked phenomenal. Spoiler alert when we get to the positives. Uh, I guess we have to talk about negatives because I didn't really talk about any. Well, I did, but just, you know, not as much. Um, Offense was bad tonight. I want to give a ton of credit. You know, we had to give credit to Max Freed. Reynaldo Lopez, I know he ends up giving up three runs over five innings, which is not a great start. Like, it's a 5.40 ERA, which honestly kind of tells you how ERA is a very flawed stat. But he looked good. I was extremely skeptical about Reynaldo Lopez being a starting pitcher. That's a starting pitcher. Atlanta's so good at this. So, so good at this. That being said, some very poor results tonight. Julio Rodriguez goes 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Uh, Mitch Garver goes 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Um, Nobody gets more than one hit tonight. Uh, Josh Rojas is an exception. Well, he only gets one hit, but we'll talk about why that doesn't really matter in a second. Um, It's a bad offensive game. You know, outside of Rojas, nobody walks. 11 more strikeouts. You got to give credit to the other team, but the Mariners have made starting pitchers and relievers look too good. This offense is still a problem. This offense is still a problem. Uh, Ryan Stanek looked awful. Now... One of those hits is a little blooper that uh, Placido Polanco can't quite make the play on. He did make a good play today. We'll, we'll talk about the defense in a second. Um, I just don't trust Ryan Stanek at all. And he's such an important part of this bullpen right now. Such an important part. And he didn't miss any bats. He only gets the one out, gives up three hits and two runs. Now, one of the runs is absolutely Andre Munoz's fault, not because of how he was pitching, but because of a very bad defensive play. But I'm concerned. I am concerned, and I do think that the Seattle Mariners need to be aggressive in looking for a high-leverage reliever. Knowing that Matt Brash may not come back, knowing that Gregory Santos isn't back at the very earliest until the end of May because he's on the 60-day injured list, you got to make a move. you got to make a move to make this bullpen better. The obvious answer would be, hey, Brian Wu or Emerson Hancock, you could move one of those guys to the bullpen. You could, but you can't (laughs) because you need six starters. You need these guys to stay fresh. You need them to stay on schedule. You can't go with a six-man rotation. So you are going, and it would be so silly to go to a six-man rotation for reasons that we will get into. Um, They need to address the bullpen. As good as Gabe Spire has been, as good as Trent Thornton is, I, I know I gave him a hard time, but the results have been great. Are you really trusting those guys in high leverage situations? I sure ain't. I mean, Gabe Spire, I am. But I'm not trusting Ryan Stanek in high leverage situations. No, he's just, he's an average reliever. An average reliever who's being counted on to be a lot more than that. So, that's a negative for sure. And, you know, I wanted to talk about it last night. Just as good as the Mariners are, the pitching, and we'll get into it. Oh my gosh, will we get into it? As good as those arms are, it's very frustrating to watch how bad they are at holding runners and defensively. They are not good defensively. They are very bad at holding runners. And it's a problem. It's a problem that could bite them in the you-know-what in the long term. It may not if they pitch as well as they do, but 
It could. And it's frustrating because it's avoidable. It's an avoidable thing. All right, enough negative crap. Let's get into positives. Simply Seattle, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for providing the very best in Seattle sports gear for the Mariners, the Seahawks, the Kraken, the Huskies, the Storm, and just Seattle stuff. Look at this gorgeous kingdom. Uh, almost called it a onesie. <laughs> Look at this gorgeous kingdom hoodie. Uh, kingdom hoodie that I'm wearing. I love this. You see the Seattle, Washington? It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And once you find all the beautiful stuff that you want, use code MOLLYWAP15 to save 15% off your order. It's a great deal from awesome people. Link in the description. I don't think I gave the code. M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5. Thank you so much, Simply Seattle. Uh, Luis Castillo shoved. Absolutely shoved against one of the best lineups in baseball. One of the best all-around lineups in baseball. Do you know how many guys on Atlanta I would take on the Seattle Mariners? Let's just do this real quick. Would I want Ronald Acuna Jr. on my team? Hmm, let me think about that. Ozzie Albies, Austin Riley, Matt Olson, Orlando Arcia, Michael Harris, Travis Darnode, Jared Kelnick. I think all of those guys, every single one of them, is an upgrade on their... Mm, I almost made a mistake there. Travis Darnode is not an upgrade on Jared Kelnick. And Michael Harris isn't an upgrade on Julio, even though Julio's results have been pretty crappy but Michael Harris is really good I find a way to get him in the lineup you get my point look at how many guys you would want hitting for the Seattle Mariners and they have been dominated by the Seattle Mariners starting pitching over these two games worked absolutely got their clocks cleaned his command tonight was so good and yeah he got off to a little bit of a rough start to begin the year Hurt a little bit by his defense, no question about it. But we expect more from Luis Castillo, right? Well, we're getting more from Luis Castillo. And I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. Some of you had stupid takes on Luis Castillo. Stupid. Some of you still have stupid takes. The amount of people who forgot how good this guy was in the postseason and claim that he couldn't pitch in big games because of his two bad starts last year, you're, it's dumb. It's misinformed dumbness. Luis Castillo's freaking awesome. And if you think anything else, you don't know what you're talking about. It's really weird. This town has a weird relationship with Luis Castillo and Julio Rodriguez. And someday I'd like to go over it, but I, I'm not in that space right now. It's a very odd relationship. He was awesome. And while Munoz does make the air, he pitched as well as I think I've seen him all year. The rise that he had on that fastball, holy goodness gracious, you know what is bodacious. How do you hit that? How in the world do you hit that? He's phenomenal. He is a phenomenal talent. We need to see more consistency. That's true for a lot of pitchers his age. A lot of pitchers his age. So yeah, Stanek wasn't good. But the, the sandwich of Stanek, Castillo, unbelievable. As the starting pitching, it's it's... It's just unheard of what they're doing. It's unheard of. And then Munoz was just dominant. Got two huge outs with the bases loaded in the eighth inning. I, I could not be more impressed with what I saw from Munoz on the mound. Off the mound. Let's get let's get those let's get those pitcher infield practices going. But the pitching was just phenomenal tonight. And again, against one of the best lineups in baseball. And a lot of those guys playing well. A lot of those guys playing well. By the way, Ronald Acuna has a 245 average and 318 slugging percentage. And I don't hear many people complaining about him the way people complain about Julio. 
It's just weird. You guys are weird. You guys are entitled to your opinion, but you're weird. Um, Offensively, Josh Rojas. Now, it's unfortunate that Julio has the bad game because Josh Rojas probably could have done some real damage. Draws three walks, gets the hit, scores a run. He was excellent tonight. He's been excellent all year. That's now a 938 OPS, folks. And not that small a sample. We are just about at the one-fifth point. A lot of baseball to be played? Of course. Will he have a 938 OPS at the end of the year? Nope. Uh, I say that confidently because, you know, it could actually be higher. It could be lower. But I'll say that the number 938 won't be reached. No, you know what I mean. He's going to have some scuffles. But what a start to this year. And it's worth pointing out, he was pretty darn good with the Mariners last year, too. Some defensive guffaws. But they like this guy, and he has shown why. He has shown why, and then some. Polanco with the big homer. Clobbered that thing. Great to see him drive the baseball. You know, a 290. It's so funny to see that Julio Rodriguez and Jorge Polanco are combining for a slugging percentage of 598. And the Mariners are on a 90-game win pace. Better than 90 wins. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, Dylan Moore with the big double. And then also I think it's worth pointing out how good I think Moore has looked at shortstop. He gets kind of a late break. He doesn't have the elite instincts that Crawford does. But he has more range. He's a much more athletic player. I was talking in a text chain today that, yes, Crawford certainly has the better arm. But Moore is a really athletic dude, and I we talked about it a little bit ago. I don't think you can overstate how much healthier he looks than last year. People look at the 193 average. I don't think that's indicative of how Dylan Moore has played at all this year. He's been a very big part of their success, and we are talking about success now, folks. This team started out six and ten, and they're eleven and three since then. This is awesome. I am having a blast, and it's so great to see this team play so darn well. If you want to be frustrated, and you can be, by what if six and six was eight and eight, or six and ten was eight and eight? You know, another couple of wins would look nice, and they could come back to haunt this team because I don't think Texas is going away. But this is fun. This is fun to watch, mainly because, look, it's not for everybody. I love watching quality pitching. And to say they're getting that right now, this is unreal. And I've seen some good Mariner pitching. I grew up on Randall K. Johnson. My middle years, had Felix Hernandez, and I've had guys like Jamie Moyer, Freddie Garcia, Joel Pinheiro at one point, Iwakuma. I have seen some good Mariner pitching. I've never seen anything as complete as this. I wish the offense came even close to it. But if the offense came close to it, the Mariners would probably be like 29-3. and three. If this lineup can be average, if it can give you four runs a game, it's going to win a ton of baseball games, and it's going to compete for a world championship. Tomorrow, we got Emerson Hancock going against Chris Sale. I mean, the way Hancock's pitched, this is not the on-paper uh, <laughs> mismatch that it was looking to come into the year. Awesome. This is just fun. This is fun to see. You took on the World Series champion, the World Series runner-up, and one of the best teams in baseball over this last week, and you have been overwhelmingly the best team on, on, on the field during those games. 
If you can't get joy in that, I don't know what to tell you. Other than to please hit like, please hit subscribe. Really appreciate the support. This is awesome. This is really, really fun.